Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Missing Live. This is our first stream where we are featuring an incredible family and a story that has been streaming uh, and being watched all over our Facebook, all over our, our uh, YouTube, all over our Fox 26 page. So I appreciate you joining us. And I want to introduce you to Robin Corey, who is joining us. She is looking for her daughter. So Robin, first of all, thank you for being with us. And for those of you who are watching and maybe didn't have the chance to watch the story when it aired live uh, for us on Fox 26, I want to give you a chance to see that story now. I'm not here for the likes. I'm not here for the views. I'm here to fight for my daughter who has been silenced and who is still missing. And she's a child, a child, a baby. Kristen Galvan was 15 years old when she was last seen January 2nd, 2020, mere weeks after a brief first disappearance. Straighten it out. Look. <laughs> she had run away with a boyfriend and she was gone for a week and a half. I received a phone call from HPD and they had picked her up on this net. An area notorious for prostitution in Houston. Robin says Kristen was pulled into sex trafficking and was acting different after her return. Then she vanished. We had given her back her phone. And then she went missing the day after. This time, Robin turned to private investigators. She personally scoured the streets and dug to the bottom of Kristen's social media and everyone Kristen was connected to online. And so I followed their accounts and found out their gangs and just this deep, dark world of um, sex trafficking, child sex trafficking. Robin even flew to Atlanta after the district attorney showed her a picture that they thought was Kristen. That picture was 100% like my daughter. Where was the picture from? It was taken in Atlanta. They would not give me the website, obviously. Um, so I then scoured the web and found my daughter on an escort website. I flew up there. Um, there was a few other girls listed in the same ad, ad as her. I found them as well. Um, and she was up there. Robin has found several missing girls in her quest for Kristen. How is it when you help reunite a young girl with her family, knowing that your little girl is still missing? I feel great, good, they have closure. But Robin says she is running out of leads. No closure, even after three men have been charged in connection with Kristen's disappearance and trafficking. In Kristen's case, we know what happened to her. We know. I just heard the stories that I've never heard of my daughter's own testimonies. And I've met survivors of sex trafficking and I can't, I can't stop and look the other way because it's not just my baby. It's not just my daughter. Being so raped and nobody can find her. My daughter has a price tag. How much is your child worth? I gotta buy my baby. All right, Robin. I was able to watch you and see your reaction as you watched. And I haven't gotten to talk to you since that interview, which as everyone saw was an incredibly emotional day for both of us and for everyone. I mean, you had a team of people around you. But Robin, how is it to see your story told? Um, it's, it's, it's fabulous. You know, um, in the beginning, we really wanted to keep Kristen's story kind of private because, you know, we know where she, you know, what's happening. And, um, uh, my main goal is to get her back safe and unharmed. Um, but two years is just too long and, and her case has gone cold. So here we are. Now you have followed a lot of leads. Uh, you have gone into the depths of this horrible world. Uh, and I want to talk about that because I didn't have, you know, in television, we only have so much time 
to get into it. And this is where I want you to share a little bit more. Um, so I know, and I've watched your YouTube videos. Those of you who want to follow Robin, she's got a YouTube page, Facebook page, uh, lots of information where you can find uh, to follow Robin. But tell us about the, the messages you have been receiving, people uh, who've contacted you, Al, as you've begun to look for your daughter. Um, we could talk for hours um, on this subject, but, you know, since day one of getting Kristen's face out there, the, the ransom messages have begun. Um, you know, we have your daughter, we need this much of money, or she's going to be at this location, blah. I mean, just the crazies. Um, and it's, it's, it's amazing how much people want to hurt, um, you know, a family trying to find their daughter. I mean, if, you know, it's, it's cruel. I mean, um, it's cruel. You've had people threaten you? Yes. Um, yes. Threaten, um, you know, in rescuing these girls, uh, we're taking away the um, buyers, I mean, and the pimps investments. Um, we're taking their money off the streets and um, they figured out, you know, who we were and, and you know, we, we've had definitely some, some threats and, st you know, stuff like that. And you've had also some people who've contacted you posing as Kristen, and at times you believed it was Kristen. Talk us through uh, some of those communications. Um, that was actually with, um, um, like the, the, the Latasha Robinson and the deceased infant, um, somebody was portraying themselves as Kristen. And, um, you know, as soon as I got the messages, I sent them to the proper authorities. Where um, did you get the messages on Facebook? Uh, th this particular one was Facebook Messenger. Yes. And what did they say? Um, that they were Kristen, that she had, she could only use the phone for a certain amount of time. Um, he, he, he's a new guy. Uh, mom, we're trapped. I'm trapped in here. Um, please don't respond if, if, you know, and then I received, um, 19 calls from this person. And normally the thing about, you know, these, these cowards that hide behind the screen is they don't want to talk to me. Um, but this one actually called and that's what made it seem real because I mean, who would call? So you they got a phone call? You heard a voice? Um, well, on the Facebook messenger, I don't accept messages from people I don't know because of the, the, right. I mean, the influx of messages, but, um, I never answered that call, but, um, you know, as I got the, the messages in, I sent them to proper authorities. I can't even imagine how difficult that was to, to at least for a moment, have the feeling like maybe she was, she was that close. You know, you're holding your screen, you're holding her words potentially. Correct. So you were told by this person that Kristen was pregnant. Yes. So what did you do? Um, I contacted proper authorities. Um, they weren't open in the evening hours when I got these messages, but uh, you know, 9 a.m. I'm up as I'm up and I, I call them. And um, this, this per Latasha had said that she had been trapped in a house with Kristen, that there were three other girls they were pregnant. This is where they put the girls when they're pregnant. They have a private doctor that takes, I mean, a whole story about, you know, being beat, tortured, um, having Latasha described have, that, that this man used pictures of, their, of us. She knew who I was and who my husband was, you know, without even, you know, um, just the torture that these, these girls have to go through. Um, or supposedly went through. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, I, I, she gave us an address and, and she insisted. She called Kristen Chrissy. Um, and um, yeah, that, that was a tough one. And then um, literally we got the deceased infant lead that coordinated with that. So let's talk about this because this was a moment where you thought you were really close to something, uh, I guess to say sort of real happening in the case and a tie to her. Someone told you about a baby that they said belonged to Kristen. Yes. So how did that happen? 
um, I received a, a message via Facebook. And um, I had actually posted about a deceased infant on my Facebook uh, post because, I mean, my God, a deceased infant of all places in a porta potty. And um, this this person that portrayed themselves as a Christian and said, "Mom, I've had, you know that my baby's in a porta potty. Go find him." Mm. And I looked it up. Sure enough, it linked back, and um, I called the uh, medical examiner's office first thing in the morning and um, took care of that, went and did DNA. And four months later, um, four months, four months, took four months for the DNA. Yes. My primary care physician could have had it in 48 hours. I mean, I could have gone to Mari. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm on, I can't even imagine the, the, the waiting, right. The, the, the yeah. mental language of waiting, thinking right. this was potentially your grandchild. Correct. And, you know, we, Kristen's story, she, she disappeared. She went totally blank from social media. Nothing popped up. And, and I mean, this was logical and it matched up with the other Latasha Robinson story. Mm -hmm. So what did they, what did they ultimately tell you about the DNA? It's not Kristen's child. (sighs) So two years and you have personally, you know, Two years. You've been down on Bissonette, which is a street that unfortunately uh, we sent our photographer that day after we spoke with you. He was able to catch on camera very blatant displays of uh, the horrors that happen on Bissonette for many women and many men who are drawn into and captured into the world of human trafficking. I'm um, talk about sort of you talked about how you've seen Bissonette and the, the prostitution and sex trafficking there explode during the pandemic, which is about, you know, pandemic kicked off just about when Kristen disappeared. Mm-hmm. So talk about your experience looking for her on Bissonette. Um, when Kristen disappeared, I immediately went out and um, a private investigator showed me the ropes of Bissonette because I personally, I know to stay away from that area. I mean, I, you know, I was born and raised in Houston. Uh, we just don't go over there. Um, and never could I imagine my child. Um, but anyway, so I had him show me the ropes and the blade and, um, you know, we, uh, I, I was cruising bisonette, um, switching cars, renting cars. Cause I drive a very distinctive car. And, um, I mean, ultimately that led me to figuring out, oh man, Hey, that's a missing kid walking street over there you recognized oh, yeah. girls that you saw was it girls boys who did you see i mean young yes young girls yes we were so- girls to, as young as 12 off of business and what did you do when you saw someone who you recognized because i imagine that you were, became very uh familiar with the other missing people in the area yes. um i went to nick mix uh, national center for missing and exploited children's database and i mean sure enough it matched up and so you brought these girls home. Um, to, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. You helped. And no. you and I talked and we showed a little bit of that, um, that conversation of ours about having gone through the experience now several times where you've seen someone on the street and then seen them rescued, been part of that process and actually seen them rehabilitate and move on and, and sort of get out. And you talked about that rehabilitation process is tricky and hard. Mm-hmm. So what is it like to see these girls now? Um, you know, Caitlin, two years into this, um, finding these girls is the easy part. It really is. It's the it's when we get them back that becomes the problem. Um, they have been brainwashed. They have been drugged up forcefully. Um, they have been raped. They're, I mean, one girl, she doesn't even like boys. And we found her on Bissonette with blood dripping down her legs. Mm. Yeah, I mean, let's just get real here. Um, and it's when we get them back is the problem. There's no care to give these girls unless you want to spend, I mean, thousands and thousands of dollars to get them good help. And we, you know, we recently had a story on, that was tweeting about about people who maybe see that their child might need help, and not even somebody who's gone through as much trauma as those who've been human trafficked, but. The fact that you can call for an appointment and it could be months before you have someone available to speak with 
or meet with or have an appointment with your child or your loved one. Uh, so that's a, a, a whole other issue with the world of human trafficking. So you told me that you're running out of leads with Kristen. Where does it stand? Um, there's no leads on Kristen. Um, nothing on the escort websites. Um, I'm sure local law enforcement runs her face through traffic jam every day, as they should be doing. Um, but the endless nights of scrolling and clicking individual ads and searching and scouring the web and um, these gangs, there's Chris, there's no life of my daughter. Um, she wouldn't do this, Caitlin. Um, she'd at least reach out to, to, to her brother, who is now 14. He was 12 at the time of her disappearance. He's now 14. Um, he misses her terribly. Um, she would have reached out to my sister, um, you know, say what you want about, you know, oh, she, you know, teenage girl, mom, uh, Kristen loved me and I loved her. She's my firstborn child. She's my best friend. And she wouldn't do this. Now, those of you watching, uh, and I see some of you asking questions, sending in questions. Uh, you're welcome to send those in. But Robin, I just want you to know most of the comments that we're getting are words of support for you for opening up, for being here, for the work you're doing. You're doing a lot of work and you do have a guest with us. You have brought Paula Richardson uh, to join us. And, and in the emotional moments that we've worked together, the one thing that amazed me was the group of friends that you had with you supporting you. So Paula, introduce yourself. Tell us how you got connected with Robin in the case and, and help everyone see, see where, where do you fall into the picture of the service <laughs> then? Hi, Caitlin. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I, I met Robin because of Kristen. Um, it was so funny. I was actually working with and helping out a nonprofit organization here in Houston. Um, and we got wind of the story of Kristen. Um, and my daughter is a survivor of human trafficking. And I understand what it feels like to not know where your child is, and then to find out that your child is being trafficked. And so for a while I was thinking, okay, I need to meet this Robin. And finally our paths crossed and it was just like, you know, we had known each other forever. You would be amazed how a pain like this could bring people together. And it was just one of those things that I could relate to. And it's not something you wanna be able to relate to, but it's one of those things that you need somebody to relate in a situation like that. And so that's how I met Robin and uh, we kind of joined forces and I started looking for Kristen, just like she was my own baby, because I know what it's like to look for your child and not be able to sleep at night. Um, everything she's done, I told her, nothing looks crazy. Nothing sounds crazy to me. Everything you're doing, I understand because I've done it. I've been in the bushes, Robin. I've been in places I never thought I would go. I've been in strip clubs for my child. And so we fight side by side looking for that baby. Kristen is just as much as mine as she is Robin's. Um, and so we fight, we fight and we will fight until Kristen is back home with that family. So that's why I'm here and that's how I'm here. My story brought us both together and her story brought her to me. Thank you, Paula, for being here, girl. Uh, you are welcome. You know, I got your back, sis. Always. So, so, so as you two have worked together, tell us about some of the best things that other people can do for the many people watching us. What are some of the best ways people have helped you out in your search uh, and your healing and in your processing of what you've gone through? I mean, all we did was... Um, I mean, Paula, I mean, no other person knows my pain as much as a mother who's going through the same thing. Um, you know, people don't even know what to say to me. And uh, sometimes I don't even know what to say to myself. But God has put in place some pretty powerful and godly women um, in my life to combat um, human trafficking, uh, not only to find my daughter, because, I mean, I'll never stop, but to realize that we do have a problem and we really must save the children. And, 
that, you know, Houston, we got a problem, you know, um, these children where I'm from, you don't mess with children. Um, and if you do, I mean, come on now. I mean, what does the Bible say? Cast a stone around his ankle and throw him into the depths of the ocean. And these men are getting off with, with, with slaps on the wrist only to traffic girls again. And um, I'm truly grateful for my support system. And I truly do have a good family and uh, friends um, that have stuck by my side throughout this. So Robin, at this point, what's your next step? Um, keep looking, um, bringing the, the men to justice. Um, you, know, you had several people yeah. you know, charged in connection with either Kristen's disappearance, uh, and this was, she had an initial disappearance where she was found on Bissonette and rescued, and there been several people charged. What's the status of that? Yes, um, one of them is free. He is free, so y'all need- On bond or no longer uh, facing charge? He got no bill, no face, no case, pretty much on Kristen's case. He is free and I have recordings of him still selling women. Um, the other one had court in the beginning of December and, uh, it was his third probation violation and, um, he already had a trafficking charge and they let him back. But anyways, um, they got him on that probation violation. It was proven true that he, um, trafficked a child and raped a child and he received 15 years. The other witness for that is going to step forward for his trafficking charges. Uh, the other rapper, Houston rapper, um, he has court coming up in February. Um, uh, he has federal court. So I'm, I'm praying that, you know, he'll, he'll get definitely get what he deserves in that. Because I think it's 14 women he housed, including my daughter. And at, at court, in the process of some of these cases, you've heard testimony with detail about what was going on and what was happening in, in the situations surrounding your daughter. And that's gotta be really hard to shake. But what is some of what you learned in terms of, of how this operation works and how they were able to hold on to your daughter at that first time and, and potentially still today? Right. And, you know, I didn't hear this testimony because it's an ongoing investigation. So in December, when I heard all of the evidence and also the DA did a fabulous job at presenting Kristen's evidence without her being here, um, I'm thoroughly impressed in our DA for, for making this happen. Um, but in December, so to hear Kristen's story and she's not here, to hear the acts that she, my daughter was forced to do has put this fire inside of me, Caitlin, um, that I'm not going to stop. And um, get, we need to get some laws changed in honor of my daughter's name because she didn't go out vain. I, I don't know where she is. These men may have hurt her because they are being charged. Um, but just the horrific acts that this particular man forced my daughter to do? No. No. I mean, no child. No, this, this, and I, and you know, as a mother, and I know so many people on our feed as parents can, can try to think about it and, yeah. and can't even begin to understand. And then, Paul, I see you shaking your head. I mean, you know, you know. It's slavery. Yeah. It, it, it's slavery. Yeah. And it's not even something you can, you know what? I think you, I, I told Robin it when we first met, it, you think of the, the worst things that you see on TV. And when you find out that your child is trapped in something like this, and then you start finding out details about what it is that they're trapped in, those things that you learn, they don't, even compared to the things that you, you've you seen on TV and then what they do to you on the inside as a parent. Um, it's just completely unfathomable to know and not be able to do anything about the danger and the, 
the amount of pain that your child is in. It's, it's, it's just something that you cannot put in words um, when it when it comes to, to this, this horrible world of trafficking. It's just something that unless you've been there and I don't wish it on anybody, it's just something you cannot, you, you can't verbalize. Well, we appreciate both of you speaking with us. Robin, I'm so grateful that you allowed us the opportunity to share Kristen's story in hopes that someone of the many people, the hundreds who've tuned into this live stream, the quarter million people who saw Kristen's story on our just our Facebook post in the first 12 hours from when we posted this piece. Um, we're just hoping you get something. I know there were some people who sounded like maybe they felt like they might have had a lead for you, offered something. Um, how, how has the response been to, to this story since we since we were able to share it? Um, there's a lot of positive people and, and, and digital detectives ready for action. And there's, you know, and then you have people thinking they see her. And then, you know, it's somebody knows something. All it takes is one person. And, you know, if you're out there and you know something's happened to Kristen, please come forward. You can remain anonymous. Um, we just need closure and we need our home. Mm -hmm. And um, so please just keep your eyes out. You know, we have all these masks on and it's so hard to, to, to find a missing child when, when masks are everywhere. So you need to learn, you know, just different um, techniques to, to look for pe people in different ways. And Robin, I know you've got a Facebook page, you've got a YouTube channel. Uh, those of you who are in the comments, who are watching, who want to learn more, some of you asking some questions, um, we are out of time, but I invite all of you to follow Robin, to, to go to the, the YouTube channel in particular, where you've been posting even more in-depth detail and some of the backstory of what you told us here today. Uh, and, and hopefully someone will know something and that's the key, right? That is the key. So thank you to everyone who has shared the story of Kristen Galvan. Thank you for everyone who's been looking and thank you, Robin, uh, for the incredible work you've done to help other families in the process of looking for your daughter. And Paula, thank you for holding up Robin and I'm sure very many others in our community uh, through your strength and the strength that you've found through this horrible situation that both of you find yourselves in. Uh, we're praying for you. We appreciate you. Everyone in the comments, thank you so much. I'm looking to the side here to see much of, of what you say. Um, Myra's asking, how do we follow you? Uh, Robin, where can people find you? What should they look for? Um, you can follow me on YouTube under Justice for Kristen, um, Facebook Justice for Kristen, um, Mascara Houston um, is my new organization to try to get some work done. And um, same with Instagram, Mascara Houston. Okay. We'll have Robin hop in the comments uh, here on the Facebook feed, on the YouTube feed uh, to add links to those as well. And we'll do what we can to get you links. So those of you who are watching or want to share this with family and friends that you can do that and you can continue to follow and support Robin. Uh, and remember to continue to follow our series as well. The Missing, we're going to continue to shine a spotlight. This all started with the Gabby Petito case. We said, look, if, if the whole world can want to try to find this one girl in Utah, then maybe we can get just a handful of people to try to find some of the thousands of Houstonians who are missing on any given day. So I appreciate all of you, appreciate those of you who watched, uh, and we will continue to work uh, to see what we can do to bring some of these missing people home. So thank you, everyone, and we'll see you uh, hopefully next week, not next week, the Wednesday after, but we'll continue to bring these stories forward. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin.